Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Genetics, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about urine potassium, urine chloride, urine uric acid, urine electrophoresis, Ben's Jones proteins, beta 2 microglobulins, microalbumin, urine ketone bodies, and even urine bilirubin and urobilinogen. And in the last video, we started talking about estimating the glomerular filtration rate. We can use inulin, we can use creatinine, or we can use cystinin C. Today, we're not talking about creatinine, we're just talking about creatine phosphate, which is very important for your muscles. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Let's start by answering the question of the previous video. An examiner is trying to measure glomerular filtration rate. Injected inulin intravenously. The urine volume is 0.6 liters per hour. Urine concentration of inulin was 100 milligrams per milliliter. The plasma concentration of inulin is 20 milligrams per ml. Can we calculate the GFR? Yes, do you remember the equation? GFR is the same as inulin clearance is the same as VOOP. V times U over P. What's the V? Urine volume or urine flow rate. It's the volume of urine per minute. How about this? This is the concentration of inulin in the urine over concentration of inulin in the plasma. Why does GFR equal this? Was explained in detail in the previous video. It was all about the thick principle. What's the measuring unit of GFR? mLs per minute. So we gotta convert this into mLs per minute. When you do the conversion, you'll find that 0.6 liters per hour is the same as 10 mLs per minute. What's that? This is my V. Do we have the urine concentration of inulin? Yeah, here it is, the 100. Do you have the concentration of inulin in the plasma? Yes, I do. Plug in the numbers, before you know it, the GFR is 50 mLs per minute. Not the best GFR in a human being, to be frank. Although you gotta take into account the age of the patient. Now on to today's topic, creatine phosphate. It's part of muscle metabolism to bring energy to the muscles so that you can exercise. Whether you eat carbohydrates, proteins, or fat, at the end of the day, they will be digested and metabolized and give you acetyl-CoA, the queen, the sun around which all other planets revolve. Acetyl-CoA, if you have oxygen, can enter into the TCA cycle and give you energy, and then electron transport chain, more energy. So there you go, from the moment I ate any source of carb until I got tons of energy in the mitochondria. What's the currency of energy in the cell? adenosine triphosphate. High energy bond, high energy bond, third one is an ordinary energy bond. For the most part, breaking bonds is an endothermic reaction, but ATP is an exception. Here, when you're breaking bonds, it's an exothermic, i.e. it releases energy, it releases heat. Exothermic extrudes heat. How do you break down ATP? By an enzyme known as ATPase. Where did the muscle get the ATPase from? It's literally inside the muscle. Is it in the actin or the myosin? It's in the myosin, namely in the heads of myosin. The heads of myosin contain what? Actin binding site to bind with actin, ATP binding site to bind to ATP, and then let's break down the ATP. ATPase activity, a catalytic site, is part of the head of the myosin. Why do you call it myosin? IN means protein, myo means muscle. It's the protein of the muscle. And I've talked about actin and myosin in great detail in my muscle physiology playlist. So when you break down the ATP, you release energy. The more you contract your muscles during strenuous, vigorous exercise, the more you're squeezing your blood vessels, decreasing the radius of the vessel, decrease the blood flow to the muscle, which decreases oxygen delivery to the muscle. Also with strenuous, vigorous exercise, even though you might be breathing fast, the lung cannot keep up with all your muscles that are contracting like crazy. So you end up in the anaerobic metabolism. Anaerobic means we do not need oxygen. Glycolysis is anaerobic metabolism. It can produce little ATP. It does not need oxygen. But then if you have enough oxygen, you go to the aerobic stage. You enter into the TCA cycle and electron transport chain, more ATP. So what's the source of energy for the muscle? Well, it depends. In the first five seconds, of exercise, there is just ATP that's already there, pre-formed, pre-existing ATP. So the muscle will use that. Then after five seconds, we gotta look for something else. And this is the story of creatine kinase enzyme, which is a kinase. What's a 
glucokinase. It's an enzyme that moves a phosphate, adds a phosphate, adds a phosphate to adenosine diphosphate to make adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy currency of your muscle. Where did the creatine kinase get that extra phosphate from? From creatine phosphate. When you take the phosphate away from creatine phosphate, it becomes just creatine. What do you call this? The phosphagen system. This enzyme could be called creatine kinase or creatine phosphokinase. Same exact thing. That's why if I have a disease that destroys my muscles, like rhabdomyolysis, what do you think is going to happen? My muscles are breaking down, releasing whatever was inside of them, including creatine phosphokinase. You can measure this in the blood. It's a clue that there is muscle destruction going on. Creatine phosphate is very important as a source of ATP for your muscle. However, what's the fate of creatine phosphate? It will get metabolized into creatinine, and then creatinine will go to the blood and will end up in the kidney. The kidney will excrete the creatinine into the urine. Therefore, do you think creatine phosphate depends on the muscle mass? Absolutely. Do you think his son, creatinine, depends on my muscle mass? Absolutely. Which means if I'm a muscular dude, I will have more creatine phosphate and more creatinine. Makes perfect sense. Now, would it be shocking to you if I tell you that in cases of kidney failure, serum creatinine goes up because there is no one to excrete it. Yes, it makes perfect sense. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Here is another note. Suppose that I'm a muscular guy. My creatinine is higher than average. And as you've learned in the previous video, we use creatinine clearance to estimate the GFR. So muscular people will have a higher GFR than thin people. And that's why males on average has higher creatinine concentration in the blood and higher glomerular filtration rate because it's estimated based on the creatine clearance, which depends on the muscle mass. How can I account for this difference between male and female? Divide by the total body surface area, then the average female will have the exact same GFR as the normal average male. Moreover, as I grow older and older and older and become a geriatric elderly grandpa, what do you think happens to my muscle mass? It decreases. What do you think happens to my creatinine level? It decreases. What do you think happens to my estimated GFR? It goes down. That's why a good doctor is the one who looks at the creatinine and then looks at the age of the patient because it matters. Oh, I think that a GFR of 90 mLs per minute is too low. Too low for whom? If you want to learn more about renal physiology, the GFR, titratable acidity, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, etc., download my renal physiology course. To learn more about preeclampsia and eclampsia, which can damage my kidney, download OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com and to learn how the kidney regulates your acid base status download my acid base imbalance course which will teach you about metabolic acidosis metabolic alkalosis respiratory acidosis respiratory alkalosis high anion gap normal anion gap serum a smaller gap stool a smaller gap urine anion gap and much more thank you for watching please subscribe hit the bell and click on the join button you can support me here or here go to my website to download my courses be safe stay happy study hard this is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.